Hello, and welcome to my let's play of Penumbra Overture. Ah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's a horror game. I'm not quite looking forward. Well, I am, because I want to know what happens, but never mind. Ignore me. It's just a horror game. I don't really like horror games, but I like Penumbra. So, uh, huh. Easy, I'm so bad at action games. My story began in February. Ah, Philip. I've heard your story before. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it. So when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. <laughs> His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realized my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. All right. Is that all, Philip? I, I stopped paying attention after a couple, uh, very recently, but I, I, I've heard his story before, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, all right. And finally, uh, finally we're all stocked. You wanna get your stuff off. Always good to have a notebook. You have a, what is this? I guess we're not taking it. Map. So you you know where you're going. All right, you won't get lost, will you? I trust you, Philip. Emergency glow stick. It's not going to be an emergency glow stick. It's going to be a glow stick you use constantly because I don't like the flashlight. Is anyone? Oh. Break it. Oh, I thought I actually dropped something there. Um, is there anything important in this note? Just a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something. And... Uh, Alright, I don't think it's important. Because I've actually read that before. Coat. <sighs> He's not gonna pick up the coat. Oh, this? Really? I guess. As well? I. Uh, Alright. Oh! Ah. That's how you do that. Alright. Ah. <clears throat> Alright, flashlight. Mm. No! You're using it before you're. You, you, you even use a torch. Torch. I call it a flashlight. Alright. Uh, as I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utter, utter, utterly devoted I've been to the discovery of my father's past. 
I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my... Did he get lost? You said you knew where you were going, Philip. Why did you lie to me? I'm the... You, uh, you needed the new map. You needed a new map. Pick it up. Oh, I like the sounds here, though. Um, break it. Uh, all right. Come on. Open. 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 Naba da ba ba. All right. All right. So this isn't the demo for once. You have no idea how many recordings I've done of the demo trying to play with the audio levels that don't even apply to this. Uh, you probably can't even hear me. Oh, Philip, are you okay? You okay? You all right? Oh, he's okay. He's okay. Go on, Philip. Wake up. So that's not that far, and plus, things that you see are normally closer, a bit closer than they were. I should have known that the, it wouldn't hold his... okay. Ah, alright. This lags a bit more than the demo. Ah, But it would, the demo is a lot smaller of a game. Ah. It's stuck? There must be something in the way. Alright. Uh, steel rod, okay. <coughs> Close that door. For no reason at all. Um, empty boxes. Alright. Flare. Hammer. Stop. Hammer time. I know how to use the hammer. He used it in the demo, <laughs> which I played millions and millions and millions of times, so many times. Get out of the way! No, hey, hey, hey! Put away the hammer. A metal shell. What? Philip, you broke physics. Y you're still break. There we go. Alright. Oh god. Was that in game? Did you hear that scream? I don't think that was in game. What's with the little kids and stuff playing outside? Be quiet. I'm trying to do a commentary. Uh, Philip, you just moved a big metal shelf. With, like, no problem. These barrels are harder to roll than that. I don't understand. Why couldn't you open that door? That door must have a ton of metal shelves. Behind it, bleeding all the way up to the wall, making it impossible to open or something. Ah, okay, then. Ah. This reminds me of the tunnel thing in Amnesia. Uh, these games were made by the same people. Those game Amnesia and this, I think. Um, oh, 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 I forgot about that. I didn't even. And that's right. Go away. Go away. Seriously, solid. Won't open. Um, I think someone wanted to stay in. That's that door. You couldn't move this. You're a baby. You just moved a big metal shelf. And you can't move this little barrel. Maybe... Uh, I, uh, the thing I'm using to hold up my microphone, the microphone stand, duh. Eh, it was pretty heavy. I'd think a big metal shelf would be heavier than that. And he can move that with no problem, but he can't move a little barrel. Oh. 
whatever I was descending into, which was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in the remote Arctic. In the remote Arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect. It made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I never give I I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire uh society is a network of safety nets. I can't really read this plant. Emergency service at the end of a phone line of a phone line. <laughs> Health and safety in the workplace. Work work workplace, yes. Friends, family, lovers. All there if something goes wrong, a part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all most mundane if that's how you say that word, I don't know. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. Alright, alright, alright. You just... Um, Wait, what? Y'all! Oh, I heard a growl. 